Hey there, I hope you're doing well today. We are here down in Georgia. Yesterday I showed you how to remove unwanted um, photo backgrounds. We did that and you can, that's a standalone episode, but we're tying it together with today's episode, which is how to create your next custom designed photo Facebook cover photo. Of course, you can use it for any of your social media cover photos. Yesterday we removed the background of a photo that I'm going to, um, the concept of which I'm going to pull over into today's lesson. I wanted to break it up into two classes. Hi, I'm Patricia Durgan, the Christian Message Coach, and this is Marketers on a Mission, the live show for every Christian with a message to market, from beginners to advanced. We show you not only the various tools and techniques, but also the strategies and the secrets behind them. So here's your question for today. Is it time for you to create or update your social media cover photos? My Facebook profile photo is brand new. It's less than a week old. I'm going to show you how I created it. All right, let's go to... Da, 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 da. Let me share my screen. I'll walk you through the steps. Here we are. This is what I started with. Two separate items. This is the original background and the original photo that I used. And this is what I ended up with. This is the photo that is currently on my Facebook profile at the time of this recording. And I see that there's a little itchy, itchy. So there's a. <laughs> uh, this is not accurate. But we're going to roll with it because that's what we do. Um, but this fits within this text here fits within the gray light gray background so what do we start with two things i want to tell you canva is something and other inexpensive photo editors and um, graphic art editors they can do what i'm showing you today i'm going to show you using just doing it on my keynote don't get hung up on the tools okay you can certainly use something that's very fancy schmancy and uh, you know and i encourage you to do that if you have access to that kind of a program and that kind of gifts those kinds of talents if you don't though you can still get a very high quality result facebook has a suggested dimensions but i don't suggest that you create your photo covers or for any social media in the given dimensions you want to double the size that they have given you now it's going to end up being the size that they have said you can't go larger you're not gonna be able to trick them or fool them into uploading something that's um, you, uh, showing more of than they have you know the space they've allotted and yet when we duplicate their maximum dimensions in pixels and we just two times then we create our cover photo image when we upload it the social media platform will compress what we've got now they don't compress it in a way that's warped or twisted they actually it retains clarity that is lost if we only upload using the smaller dimensions that they require the, every social media outlet has its own set of dimensions it must be you know your cover photo must be no less than this and no more than that um, it's about ratio and aspects and so forth <clears throat> but take my word for it and just just try it if you want to take the maximum dimension that they they suggest double it create your image in that using that as a guideline upload it and I believe you will see a greater clarity in your cover photo than you have previously if you have only used what they cite as the maximum they will, you know, it will still continue to be their size and meet their guidelines. They'll make it meet their guidelines. But within the framework of them doing that, the act of them doing that, they compress it and it's sharper and it's clearer and it's a better quality. So you can do everything that I'm going to show you today in Canva. And I do suggest that you take any social media's suggested dimensions and double them. All right. So uh, what we have here, this is the same screen, but I've chosen to use it. Uh, post it again we have two a photo with a background that I don't want and a downloaded a purchased background that I purchased from deposit photos and I ended up with this so the first step is to remove the forest background 
Now, yesterday's training, I showed you how to do that. I used a different photo. I wanted to have a photo yesterday in yesterday's episode that was more complex than this photo. Now, this one may look complex, but it's not compared to the one I used yesterday. However, <clears throat> I don't want to use that one. I never intended to use that one for my latest photo uh, cover photo. I wanted, I used it as an example to show you how to use, how to learn different techniques and apply things in trickier situations than this photo afforded. So you can see that I've taken uh, clipping using clipping magic, and I showed you that yesterday. I've taken this photo and I've created it into this photo. The photo, the, the background is gone. Okay, that's step number one. Step number two is to select a new background. Now, this is the background as it comes. But what's the guideline? We have to adjust it. This is the original, what I just showed you. This is the modified. But you'll notice it's modified in more ways than one. I'm going to show you that. Here is the guideline that we talked about a moment ago. If I can get my tools out of the way. We want to take this and bring it to the front. Now, this is what we're supposed to be sizing for in order for it to fit the dimensions and the ratio of the social media platform that we're using, in this case, Facebook. So if I just wanted to use this, eh, that's a problem, isn't it? I have to choose a selected area and then go with that. So I'm going to choose randomly, choose, I've already chosen it down here, this is the end result, but here in Keynote, I can pull this down, and I can pull this up. Do not be alarmed if you don't have Keynote, please. Just go to Canva or any of the other uh, editing programs. Now, here's what I've got, to, it's got to be no bigger than this. There it is. Now. If I didn't like this, um, then I could change it. You can do the same thing with whatever platform you're working with. But I don't, I'm not a big fan of showing a lot of floor. Now I have to confirm that I did that right. And you can see there's just a hair difference. I would need to adjust that. But we have something else that we want to change besides the photo itself. I want that photo to be longer, so I've modified it. I'll show you. This finished photo is actually two. I needed more length. That may you may run into that on a consistent basis when you're using something that a photo that has specific needs to be a specific size, but we can't just make it longer if we make it and Technically, we can if we enlarge the entire photo or image, but that's not always the best, is it? You don't want to have a photo that's so large that you've lo lost the um, point of the photo, the message of the photo or image. So what we can do, we can't do it with every photo or image, but in this case, we could. And I chose this one specifically because I believed that I could lengthen it with this technique. So here's what I did. Double this. And let's go back and get our master guide. Say I need this much space. I'm missing. Say I'm missing this space right here. This is my extension. Well, where did I get that? <clears throat> Excuse me. I took this. And remember, I'll say it again. Everything I'm doing, you can do in Canva. All right. Let's try this and see if this is going to be long enough. It is long enough. Okay, we'll get rid of this ex this first extension. Now we have another challenge, don't we? Now it's long enough, but we have the shadow here that is in the original, and then we have the snippet of the original which has the same shadow. Well, what are we going to do? Are we going to be able to use this? Let's see. Let me grip this together. Let's go here. Let me take my photo. Resize my photo. And when I 
set myself in place, nobody is the wiser. You like that? This is how we can get around obstacles. Uh, there's not always, but more times than not, there's a workaround when we want to achieve a particular goal and we can't do it as easy as one, two, three. There is typically a way to get around it. Now, I can also, I tried a couple of different approaches. Here I approached it so that the, let me see. Let me show you something else before I move on. I could use this any way I want to. And we just pull the extension, we swap the whole thing. So it's my, as the creator, it's my uh, responsibility to decide how I want to use this. Now, here's the tricky part about using it this way, in this direction. The shadow's still there. We have two, two issues that we need to resolve. One is, <clears throat> excuse me, that on a Facebook cover photo, the person is the most important thing. If, you know, if you're going to include a person's photo, the photo of the individual is more important than the background in which the individual is shown or the environment. So we could always just leave this just like this. Now, it wouldn't hurt anything technically to cut off what's behind that photo because nobody can see what's behind it. I know, but nobody else would know. Well, here's the thing. Look at all this empty space over here. We've got two problems because this empty space is means that I don't have anything showing or covering up my extension, the shadow that comes with my extension. So what does that mean? I would need to cover it up with myself, with my photo. Okay. Now, in this photo, I'm almost facing frontward. But, you know, most times... We face to the left or to the right. Even if it's subtle, there's a diff there's a there's there's not face on. And in this case, even though this is acceptable, I don't want it. So I would have to. I don't want it this way. So I could choose it. Then my arm is on the other side. I just flip that horizontally. Okay. Well, I don't like that because my badge is always on my right side, and my hair is not parted correctly. It's on the opposite side. Is typically parted. That's just a icky picky thing on my part. You can use it that way anytime you want to. Now, what about photos? Well, let's go look. Let's look at this really quick. Let's take this and put it up here. Now, when we pull this up, what are we running into immediately? We're running into a problem, aren't we? Because Facebook's image, the actual picture in the little tiny box, see, that's going to cut off my, my area here. This is how much it's being sh going to be shown. Okay, that's not going to cooperate with me, so we'll move along. <laughs> we should work around it rather than mess with it. Okay, I'm going to take this and make this the size box. And it's from the bottom up. Now, so is that what I want? No, I don't want that either. So whether I keep my photo pointing to the left or to the right, neither satisfactory, right? I, my picture, not because I'm me, but because I'm an individual, a human being, is more important to my branding than this desk and chair. <clears throat> so what do we do? We turn it back the way it was. We flip the whole thing back the way it was. Excuse me. Put me up here with the forest background removed. Now there's room for the little box that I have. <laughs> it's gone. It's gone somewhere. Bye bye. Let's look and see how we like that. Just to confirm the placement of everything. See, this would be right in here. Well, that's okay. That's all right. So there's nothing wonky behind me, no crazy sign or, you know, graphic artwork that is going to draw attention away from me as the person in the photo. 
And it also leaves me a space to create this, which is what I want to create. I don't want to just, there's nothing wrong with just putting my photo up, especially for a profile, because it is supposed to be about me. And yet I want people to know that I do something else besides stand there looking good with my hand on my hip. I want to let people know that I am the Christian Message Coach, and I have a Facebook show. Now, I could do this with the white, so Patricia, the Christian. <laughs> Message Coach. Posts, Facebook Live show every weekday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I could do it that way without a background. And it's not that it's bad or ugly, but it's not really, it doesn't really float my boat. So it's a little sort of, sort of hanging in the air. I like it to be anchored. So we have two things we need to do. One, we need to change the font because this font is too, too large for the space. The font is not, um, the message is not the most important thing, even though it is important. We want the picture to be balanced. We also have to make room now for our box so that whatever we put here, text or whatever, whatever, is not um, interfering with the special box because my image is going to be there and I can't control that. That's a decision Facebook made. So I'm going to make a background. I actually made one that was rounded. Let's do the rounded edges. And we're going to make that very, very pale. Why is this not cooperating with me? There's no reason for that to. Happen. It's just because you're watching, because you're here, and I'm glad you're here. All right. I don't want to take time to make this magical. So I'm going to show you what I'm trying to accomplish. Then I'll come down and. Oh, I was trying to change the text. That's what it was. Thank you, Lord. Let's see. All right. Now let's try it. There we are. That means now that we need to change this to black. So it will pop against the screen. It could be another color as well. I'm trying to go for very subtle here, and you can see that, I think. Pull this to the front. Put this behind it. Oh, we might make another little change here or there, but this is basically what we're doing. So this is, uh, I've adjusted the new background and um, shown you, I think it might be a hit, step ahead. <laughs> I've arranged all the elements on the other screen. These are the elements. And we can confirm that this is correct. We haven't, by extending it, or maybe when we're moving it around, we might accidentally bump it in so that it's um, gotten larger in some way. Let's go back and confirm. Oh, yeah. And we can confirm this another way by putting this in the back. And confirming it. This is the size we need. So here we have it. <clears throat> Here's my finished brand new, less than a week old Facebook cover profile. Uh, profile cover photo. That's sort of a mouthful, isn't it? It's a little tricky to say. And this is what it looks like as a screenshot. So I know that it fits where I need it to fit. I really wanted this, which is this is a, this is a finished product here. I really, let's go back to this one. I really wanted this to be, mm -mm, hold on. Let's group these together. There we go. I was interested in, that's not what I wanted to do for hair and sex. Um, you know when you're, when you were, your children were little and you took them somewhere for someone else to babysit them and you really wanted them to impress the person that was babysitting them, no matter, no matter who it was or for whatever reason, like it was a Sunday school teacher or your parent or a friend, it was the very first time that they were babysitting and you really, really wanted your children to behave. And you, you, you weren't sure. You just weren't sure. You got back and you found out that actually they were perfect, perfect darlings. Um, but then when you go home, as soon as you go home, it all falls apart, doesn't it? 
because they're in their environment and they're comfortable now. Sometimes when we're trying to teach something online, it's a sort of similar situation where everything works completely fine before you get online, whether even if you're recording, like I'm pre-recording today's episode because of the tech issues that we've discussed. The same, doing the same thing that I've always done, I'm getting a different result. But that's right. That's right. It's not going to stop us, is it? Now, I don't care for this. I wanted it further down on the gray, but I don't care for it because it's interfering with the light, the light shape. So this is what I settled on. I'm satisfied with it. Uh, is it perfect? No. Will I ever change it? Yes. But I'm satisfied with it. I don't, I'm not embarrassed by it. I'm satisfied in the way that I'm pleased with it. Not like, well, I'm satisfied. I'll have to do. No, no. I'm pleased with it. I wanted something that was simple. Easy to see at a glance with the text. It was really important for people to be able to see me, but the text equally important because that's the message I'm trying to convey. It also lines up the color that I've chosen for the background, um, has uh, lines up, coordinates with the background that I typically use um, in my, um, well, the background I've got right now with the lights hanging down. The, these two coordinate. They don't match. I wasn't trying to make them match, but they coordinate and they are pleasant together. So. Who do you know who's trying to market their message online? Perhaps they find these trainings available or useful too. Please share this video with them. Tomorrow is Wild Card Wednesday. We're going to talk about 10 simple steps to, to your best about page ever. Your about page goes on your website. It's the second most visited page on your website, on anybody's website in the world. It's very important and most people write it geared toward them when we actually need to gear it toward the audience who's seeing that about page all right so that we know they can know that we connect with them and we understand them I'm going to show you more about that tomorrow 10 simple steps to your best about page ever you won't believe how much better your about page can be that all happens right here at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time I pray this show helps you become a marketer on a mission for Christ until then I'm Patricia Durgan the Christian message coach Thanks for joining me.